Hello, my name is Trevor, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new Rune Knight Fighter subclass found in Tasha's Cauldron Everything. Now, if you are looking for a class to play that is both a tank and can deal a lot of damage, well, this is definitely the one for you. And I'm going to show you how I would build it here on Rolling with Advantage. Today as we dive in, we'll be taking a look at the new Rune Knight Fighter subclass. Now, this is a subclass that came out with Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and with all fighter subclasses, we can start taking this at level 3. Uh, the thing that I really like about the Rune Knight is that it is both uh, capable of being very offensive and also very defensive. There's a lot of different ways that you can build this. In fact, in our upcoming game, um, I have a player who is actually playing a Rune Knight. I'm very interested to see which way he goes with it. Just looking at it, I would kind of build a balance of something that can kind of do a little bit of both. Uh, but you could definitely build this to be extremely defensive or extremely offensive. But I'm going to show you how I would build it to kind of do a little bit of both. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at exactly what the Rune Knight is um, and the abilities that it has. So at third level, whenever we get this, we have the ability, uh, you gain proficiency with Smith tools. You also learn to read and write giants, which is it's fun. Um, the next thing we get at third level is Rune Carver. Now, this is the, the magic that we're pulling. It's all giant magic base, like the Rune Magic. So this is something that pulls in where you have a little bit of magic, but not like a lot of magic, like an Eldritch Knight or something like that. So what we do is we basically have runes that we can put on our armor, on our weapons, an item that we have, and then those runes have both a passive and an active effect, depending on which ones that we have active. Now, at, at third level, there are four runes that we get to choose from two of which we actually can put on so we'll have two runes active at all time and of the four i'll go ahead and tell you one i believe is an auto pick no matter what and then the other one you pick the flavor um, so here's where we are um, we're going to go over the rune options that we have the first rune option the auto pick in my opinion is the cloud rune uh, while you have it on it allows you to have advantage on uh, dexterity sleight of hand checks and also charisma deception checks kind of plays into the whole idea that the the cloud giant is the the rogue of the uh, of the of the giant world which is really cool but also think about the fact that this kind of gives us different build ideas like now that you're talking about getting advantage on side of hand checks do you make your rune knight kind of a fighter rogue in a sense um, or also a deception check so also kind of gives into that whole fighter rogue feel which could be a lot of fun now the reason that i think cloud rune is an auto pick is what it does with the active ability you can only use this ability once before uh going into a short or long rest so you have to be very judicious on how you want to use it but it's broken good <laughs> So what it does is whenever a creature you can see within 30 feet of you is hit by an attack roll, you can use your in a reaction to invoke the rune and choose a different creature within 30 feet of you other than the attacker to take that damage. Now, if you were fighting one big bad thing, um, you're basically going to say, oh no, this person got hit. We're going to you know, spread the damage around. However, if there is a second target in the room, you can say, oh, go you know the giant barbarian just hit me no just kidding i'm going to use this and i'm going to use my reaction and that actually hit the guy 30 feet away like it doesn't even have to be something close to you it's like this magical effect so as long as you have a second target in the room uh you can have that do an insane amount of damage to somebody else so i think this is extremely good defensive that also is like a reverse damage where you can kind of push it off somewhere else i think cloud Rodin is an auto pick and in my opinion uh, there's two reasons that I would play a rune knight. This is number one. The cloud rune, having that button ready to push, it does use your reaction, so we have to be sure that we have that available whenever we can kind of, and a lot of times when we get in these big fights, we can kind of telegraph, we kind of know when things are coming. So it's an amazing ability to have. Now, for the other runes, you can go with the fire rune. Now, the fire rune, while you have it on it, um, your proficiency bonus is doubled with an ability check that uh, uses a proficiency with a tool. Which is pretty cool. Um, just depending, that's one of those things that's either going to be used a lot in your campaign or almost never. It just depends on the table. Um, now, what it does it has that one effect, kind of like we saw with the cloud rune, is it has the ability to do, to do fire damage. Um, so what you can do is whenever you hit somebody, uh, you can invoke the rune to summon fiery shackles and does an extra 2d6 fire damage. Um, now, this is pretty cool because um, 
you get to kind of choose. I think I, I would, the way I'm reading this is that it's almost like a paladin smite. Did I hit? Yes. Okay, now I'll do this ability. Did I crit? Yes. Then I'll use this ability. So I would treat this as like a mini smite. Uh, but the cool thing is that the chains actually restrain the target and it also does continually damage. So I think fire rune is pretty fun. I, I, I like that one a lot. Uh, Frost rune. This one, uh, kind of like the Cloud Rune, gives us advantage on animal check handling checks and also intimidation checks. And then while I have this for 10 minutes, um, I can invoke this as a bonus action for 10 minutes. I get plus two bonus to all ability checks and saving throws that use strength or constitution. All right, so here, this is good. The reason I'm kind of eh on it is because I feel like there's other ones that I like better uh, down the road. Uh, and I'll show you that in a second. So I, I like this, the plus two bonus to ability checks. I just feel like this is the, probably my least favorite of the four that you could pick. I could be totally wrong. Like I said, we haven't seen it at the table, but just looking at it on paper, this is probably the weaker one to me. Now, the other one that I would probably pick, I think at third level, I'm definitely taking Cloud Rune, and I'm either going to take Fire Rune or Stone Rune. Now, Stone Rune, what it does is while I have it on, the passive effect gives me advantage on wisdom insight checks, and also it gives me dark vision up to 120 feet, which really is awesome because then there's certain races that I'm looking at that if I don't have dark vision, this gives me a way to get it. Uh, and it's a 120 foot version of it too, which is really good. Now, while I have this on, I can um, use my reaction to you know force someone to get a wisdom saving throw. If they fail it, they are charmed and they basically stand still. Their speed is zero and they're incapacitated. Now, I can only use this once every short or long run. So basically once every encounter, or say I can use this ability as, now the cool thing is that I can do this as a reaction. Um, and that's really, really cool. Now, will this always hit? No, but when it does, just to be able to take someone out of the fight, to have some type of you know, control on your fighter is extremely cool. And I like the passive effects of it. So for me, third level, I'm picking uh, Cloud Rune and Stone Rune. Now at seventh level, we can pick up Hill Rune, which um, gives you, like it gives you the passive is that you get advantage against being poisoned. But the cool thing is that um, it's also like a mini rage. So I can invoke it as a bonus action and my bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, I, I get resistance to all of that. So a mini rage for a fighter, very, very cool. Storm Rune is the last one that you can pick at seventh level. Um, this gives you advantage on intelligence checks. It also makes it where you can't be surprised as long as you're not incapacitated. And you can invoke the rune as a bonus action to enter a prophetic, a prophetic state for a minute. And until that ends, uh, you or another creature you see within 60 feet of you makes an attack roll or saving throw or an ability check. You can use a reaction to cause the roll to have advantage or disadvantage, but you can only use this once before a short rest. I I, I, I like where they're going with this. I like the, the flavor of the Storm Rune. I just think Hill Rune is better. Um, could be wrong. Could be a different build. You know, we'll see once we see more at the table, but that's, that's where I'm thinking. Okay, now, finally, uh, the... I said there's two reasons I would play a rune knight. The first reason is the cloud rune. The second reason is giant's might. What giant's might allows us to do is I can imbue myself to be like the might of the giants as a bonus action. This is what happens. I, if I am smaller than large, then I become large. And then you also have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. Okay. So, and then the third thing it does, it also allows me whenever once on each of my turns, my attack with a weapon or an unarmed strike, I can deal an extra 1d6 damage to a target on a hit. And I can use the Giant's Might ability to kind of like buff up or whatever. Uh, an equal to, uh, proficiency bonus equal to the number of times I've my long rest. Okay. Here's where my thoughts are on this. So, you have the ability to make yourself large. And while you are large... Um, you, your strength in the sense that your carrying capacity and all that stuff is doubled. So if you pick something that has a powerful build that already has, you know, whatever your size is, you, you carry is doubled. Now you're doubling the double. So basically what happens is, is whenever you use this ability, if you are picking a cloud, a race like a Goliath or a bugbear or something like that, um, you're basically, you can lift like 2000 pounds or something crazy. That is a lot of fun. I have played a class, a character in the past that could do something similar to that. 
it is a lot of fun walking around thinking, hey, what giant boulder could I pick up to crush on someone's head? That's a lot of fun. Um, the other ability here we see is similar to the Zealot Barbarian where they have like the ability to once per turn do an extra D6 of damage. Don't sleep on that. In fact, the way I would build it is to try to um, really build off of that ability. And the fact that it says that I can only do it um, once per turn, well, we have to start thinking about things that I can do on other people's turn, which is using my reaction to hit people. Um, that would also, so if I got an opportunity attack, I could use that ability again. So I could actually use Giant's Might ability on my turn for an extra D6 damage and also on my opponent's turn if I get an attack of opportunity. So we're going to kind of build something that will kind of work with that. This is going to be a build I use on similar for something else, but I think it really works well with Rune Knight. Uh, and then we'll kind of talk about some of these other abilities as we get going. I like Runic Shield a lot as we get going. Uh, but let me let me just go ahead and tell you where my mind is with the build right now. So this is my Rune Knight test. Uh, when we go into D&D Beyond, be sure you go down here and pick the optional class features as long as customize your origin, turn those on, um, and we're going to take a look. So I'm going to pick a Goliath. Um, I've played a Goliath before. They're a lot of fun to roleplay. Also, they kind of give me a lot of things that I want with the build. And they also kind of have the whole giant flavor already. So I think it's a very natural. I think we're going to see, it's pretty common. I think we're going to see a lot of Goliath uh, room nights. I think that's a really cool, it just kind of marries well together. Now, um, the ability things we get, we get natural athlete. Um, we could change this with origin man manager and get a different skill here, but athletics, I want that skill anyway, so it's totally fine. Stone's endurance is an incredible ability that a lot of people sleep on where I can use, um, if I get hit, I take damage, you can use your reaction to roll a D12 and you add your constitution modifier to reduce the damage. Now. I'm going to go ahead and say it now, the build that we're looking at today is going to have a lot of ways to use your reaction. And a lot of people will say, you've got too many things, but no, these are all options. These are choices. So I like having a lot of choices. Like a lot, there are, there are many classes out there that never use their reaction ever. This is a class that is sitting around waiting to figure out not just if it, how they want to use their reaction. So one of those buttons that we're going to have is going to be stones endurance. Um, take a big hit. I'm going to reduce the damage roll you know, reduce the damage down. Okay. So powerful build, like I talked about before, I, I count as a size larger when determining my carrying capacity, weight, I can push, drag, or lift. So out of the gate, I'm already kind of counting as a large, uh, whenever you look at the rules for lifting with the runic ability, I'm going to be picking up with rune knight. Um, I can double that. So we're going to double the double. So do the math. It's like 2000 pounds or so that you can pick up. It's crazy. All right. Mountainborn, um, I have resistance to cold damage. I love that. That's good. It comes up. It, it actually is pretty handy. Now, for Origin Manager, what I did was, is you can now with Tasha's, I can move these stats around. For this particular build, I didn't feel like I needed to. I need strength. I want constitution. It's totally fine. Um, I Natural Athlete, I could change this out and get another skill. I want Athletics. Totally fine. All right. Languages, on the other hand, there's something I wanted to change here because this character, a, a Goliath, can speak common and they also speak giant. I'm going to be able to speak giant with being a rune knight. So what I'm going to do over here is I just changed it to where now I speak common and dwarvish or whatever it is you want. You just you pick the suit. That's fine. All right. So for class, um, what I did is I went ahead and made this character at sixth level because that's where the build kind of, I'll show you how we kind of get here. Um, so for proficiencies, I chose survival and perception. Um, I came down here for fighting style. I chose dueling, and I'm going to show you why. We're going to be doing kind of a sword and board build with this today. Um, what we're doing is, is that whenever I have attack with something just one-handed, I get a plus two damage to all those rolls. Um, and it really adds up when we take a look at what we're doing. Standard fighter fair with second win and action surge. Uh, bonus proficiencies we talked about before that I get for being a rune knight. This is why I can pick up giant and why I want to change it from the, uh, in the origin. Rune carver, I told you, we're going to pick cloud rune. We're going to pick stone rune. And then down here um, for our ASI, the ability score improvement at level four, we're going to pick pole arm master. Now, I think I would play this character from the you know, first couple levels, um, just sword and board. One, basically a one-handed weapon. It could be a spear. At 
this point, I want it to either be a spear or a quarter staff because you can use that as something you can use with pole arm master, but you can also use it uh, one handed so it works with dueling. So it allows you to hit a little bit harder um, than you would think. Uh, the other thing with this, what this allows you to do is when you take the attack action, um, you can use uh, make another attack as a bonus action with the other end of the stick, which also works with dueling. So that bottom, you know, when you hit with the staff for a d6, um, and then you bonus action for a d4, well, that d4 gets the plus two off of dueling as well. Um, also, either one of these attacks can cue off of Giant's Might to get the extra d6 of damage. So... You know, at level three, at level four, now at level four, now we're talking two attacks, and I can use it gives me another ability, a chance to use that in a turn in case I miss or something like that. So there's another reason that we're picking this here in a second. Um, now, extra attack at level five. This is going to allow me to, you know, basically at this point I'm swinging three times, you know, with a, with a spear or quarter staff, and it's going to be d6, d6, d4. Uh, and then we add another D6 because of the Giant's Might. Now, um, level six is where we're going to get into the build. And what we're doing is we're going to take the Crusher feat. This is a new feat that we get uh, out of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Um, we get to put a point into Strength and Constitution. We're going to put it into Strength. And what we're going to do is once per turn, when you hit a creature with an attack with a deals bludgeoning damage, you can move it five feet to unoccupied space. Um, when you score a critical hit that deals bludgeoning damage, attack rolls against that creature are made with advantage. All right. So basically what this is what we're going to do now is we're going to hit we're only at this point we want to be using a quarter staff. So quarter staff, shield. We're going to attack our guy um, with, our, um, with our stick. We're going to do a giant smite damage to him. So it's going to be a D6 with a stick, another D6 for being a rune knight. Uh, you know, we get the extra damage for being dueling. And then we're going to use Crusher and we're going to move him five feet away from us. Now, the reason we're doing that is if we look at the other thing about Polar Masters, when you are wielding a glaive or in this case a quarter staff, uh, other, they provoke an attack of opportunity when they enter your reach. So with Crusher, I'm going to be moving them away. And then with Polar Master, when they come back in, I'm going to pop them again with the stick. Now, this time I'm using the attack of opportunity. I'm going to use my reaction to hit them with that. And that way we can get the Giant's Might to work a second time uh, in the round, per se. So that's how I would build it. Now, if you're looking at this, let's say now for abilities, for point by uh, strength, we're putting it 15. Uh, with plus two, that's going to get us to 17. And then with Crusher at the 6th level, that gets us to 18. I put some points into decks. I put uh, Constitution 13 uh, plus 1 for being a Goliath. It gets us to 14. And then here's the end of our stats here. Now, the reason I put some points into Dexterity, a lot of people don't want to do this if they're going to be wearing heavy armor. In this particular build, I am not going to be using heavy armor. I prefer to use a breastplate. Um, the reason is, is that I like... The Outlander background, I'm going to pick up Stealth and I'm also going to pick up Sleight of Hand. Um, the reason I'm going to do this is because I kind of see this character as a kind of different fighter and the fact that he's also kind of roguey in the sense. Um, basically leaning into that Cloud Rune idea that I get advantage on Sleight of Hand checks, so I might as well get the proficiency in it. So he's a thief, and that's totally okay. I think it'd be fun to play it this way. So this is what we're looking at. We're looking at breastplate, quarterstaff, and shield. We're not doing magic items. We're just saying this is what we would start with. And at level six, this is what we are going to be looking at. 17 AC, which is totally respectable. We're going to be able to have a couple of cool buttons to push. Um, we are going to have a lot to do on our reactions. Um, you're going to have to be kind of judicious on when you decide to do certain things. I realize that some people will criticize this and say, We've got way too much we're doing on reactions. I like having options. I like the ability to say, you know what? I've got things I can do on a bonus action. Maybe I'm going to attack with my stick another time, or maybe I'm going to use second wind. I'm going to have the ability. I push someone away with crusher. I want to hit them again, or maybe I'm going to save that because something big is about to hit us. And you have to kind of have some foresight to kind of think what's about to happen. Um, you know, do I want to save this to hit something else? There's a lot of really cool things that you can do with this. Um, and maybe we pull back on the Polar Master and we do something different. You know, you could just roll this as a straight two-handed uh, attack and do a lot of offense up front like this. I like the idea that this character is defensive. He also can do a lot of good damage. He can protect his allies. Um, and he's, it's, it's not like 
alpha strike damage, like we'll see like with a paladin or something like that. It's just very consistent damage. Um, and I think it could be a lot of fun to play. Also, we have a lot of fun role play things that we can do just with being the, I mean, think about this. This is a character that can be extremely strong and can lift, you know, pull a door off the hinges. He's also sneaky and also is got, is very good at stealing things with sleight of hand. I mean, if you look right here, you're talking about a fighter who has plus four to sleight of hand, but he also has advantage anytime he does it because of the cloud rune. That's pretty cool. Uh, I think that's pretty neat. You know, we could build more into that. So um, if you are playing a rune knight in a game where you've got coming up and you've got some ideas on this, I'd love to hear them. I'd love to see how you're going to build it. Um, if I were to build this past level six um, with this particular build, I think I'd just play this straight to 20. Um, I think I just wanted to see what the rune knight could do. I also think that um, this is something I, I think fighter rogue might be kind of fun with this. Um, maybe play it a little bit differently uh, as far as your, your fighting style, but I think it'd be pretty cool to see what this character could do. I like the idea of leaning into that cloud giant, you know, rune magic thing is pretty fun. So um, if you've got any stories from the table, I'd love to hear it. Be sure to comment down below and uh, we'll just continue to, as we kind of play test these, these new subclasses and kind of see what we think. If you have any comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you. Until next time, keep rolling with advantage. Thanks.